uncover secrets. Face your inner demons. Forget your past. Fight powerful enemies. Race against the clock. Hack the network. And look totally rad while doing it. Street Wolves Turbo Edition. Now on Kickstarter. Just a little extra there. Almost missed it. All right, great. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Savage Goose Show. I'm Goose. Uh, and today I am joined by Paul Vincent of Tablecat Games. Uh, he's going <clears> to, <throat> sorry, I start the stream and as immediately I, I have things in my throat. I have that. Uh, anyways, on people. <laughs> so Paul is going to uh, share with some share with us some awesome news about a few things uh and we're just going to talk through some other cool savage worlds happenings but before we uh dive into talk to him uh we're going to talk together about what's going on in the savage worlds community so let me go ahead and uh share my screen again to a different screen this is the hard part i always like wish that i could like share multiple screens at once to stream guard so I did, but oh well so let's go ahead and share the newsletter for the week uh, so first things first, I'm at the very bottom of the page. So that's not first things first. It's last things last. It's not last things. Not, it's the other things last, not the first. Yeah. Anyways, first thing in the newsletter today is uh, Deadlands Night Train 25th Anniversary digital box set. So not the physical box set. You can't buy that yet unless you went through the Kickstarter. But if you want the digital version of the Night Train box set, you can get that from Drive Through RPG uh, right now. You can go to the Kickstarter. Uh, there's a link down below to where you can find it on on uh, RPG. Uh, what is in this box? A lot of cool stuff. Mainly the this legendary adventure from John Goff called Night Train, uh, where you're fighting vampires on a train. I don't think that's too much of a spoiler. I think it's pretty set. Like everyone kind of knows that. Uh, as well as the sequel for from For Whom the Whistle Blows, and then the new one for uh, this set. This box set is the bank job. All of these have been updated for. Savage Worlds Adventure Edition. So if you're interested in checking these out, you want to use these in your Deadlands game, uh, you can check the link out down below for all those all those cool things. Uh, on top of that, the Deadlands Dime Novels is also available. This is on drive Through Fiction. Um, I do not have a link to that currently in the description. Hopefully I remember to do that later. Uh, but you can, if you're interested in reading through some tales that have been written about uh, the Deadlands world and uh, Ronan Lynch, you can go ahead and Pick this book up on drive through Fiction and read through those tales. Um, you can see a list here of all the different kind of short stories. That's the kind of that's the dime novels. They're the small dime short stories written by uh, different members of the Savage Worlds community. Uh, if you're using Fancy Grounds or Fancy Grounds through Steam, there are now two additional Savage Worlds products that you can get there. You have the Savage Saturday Cinema, uh, the Final Rest Stop, which is the first one in the Savage Saturday Cinema uh, series as well as a superpowers companion with all the uh, archetypes uh, for for uh, superpowers, as well as like, and this is like all different levels. You have the four color, pulp, street fighter, heavy hitter, cosmic crusader, all these like different like levels of, of power levels. Uh, Paul, I don't know about you. I, have you played a lot of uh, superheroes in Savage Worlds? Uh, no, uh, unfortunately, most of my Savage Worlds time is spent playing street wolves. Like, I, I hey, hey, generally don't have time to play other systems. I'd love to, like, but I don't know. Hopefully, maybe when things calm down, I'm able to get into it more. Yeah, maybe after all this is... Uh, sorry, spoilers. We'll get ahead of yeah, myself. the hubbub is uh, over. Uh, so, Swag Spotlight. Um, there is a currently a bundle on Drive-Thru RPG. Again, there's a link down below for um, a bundle of different products uh, for Savages at the Gates bundle. I haven't looked too deeply into this personally, to see what's all like a part of this, but the, um, you can see here we have a bunch of different small uh, products as part of the Adventurers Guild uh, that you can go ahead and get. Some of these are from Fast Furious February. Um, I haven't, unfortunately, the other live stream that happens in the Sagittarius community uh, for Savage Universe happens on Thursdays during my my D, my my not my TND, I always, uh, my Savage Rules game. So I haven't had time to. Uh, See all the nice, cool stuff from Fast Furious February, but Seventh Kind from Fast Furious Fun February 
as part of this, as well as a few other uh, nifty little things. And we keep scrolling. Oh, no. Well, I'd say about Toilet. this, I just want to say uh, that yeah. about this, it's only $4, and it, it goes to swag authors. You should support it. So, I mean, yeah, 4 bucks. Absolutely. come on. Yeah, uh, as, as it says here, less than the price of a large latte at local coffee shop. That's, I think that might be uh, less than a small latte at my local yeah. coffee shop. So it's a deal. So, yeah, go check it out. Um, I can't say I, I I haven't read through this stuff myself, but this looks pretty fun. I like to see like this seventh kind. Um, I mean, it looks like some sort of alien adventure. That sounds fun. Alien invaders. Uh, this one actually looks really interesting. The fun razor, the Benny's main, like new rules for Benny's. Uh, Benny's are just such a core mechanic to Savage Worlds so that I'm really curious to see like what other things that they came up with to do with Benny's. Yeah. Um, 15 fun ways. So um, I, I kind of, I kept simply that one that catches my eye and wanting to see like what kind of cool like house rules I could add to my games specifically for the use of bennies. Yeah, my players, because my players tend to hoard bennies. But I, I can't say that. They don't really hoard bennies. They just don't you have to use them very often. So giving them other reasons to use them would be good. All right. So we're going to stop there because there's there's something, something coming up that we have to talk about. Okay. So we're, we're going to talk about that in a second. So let's go ahead and uh, end that screen share. And then again, moving into a different screen share because it's just all about screen shares. All right. Let's go ahead and there we go. Stop screen share, present, share screen. And then you got to find the other one. All right. So, oh, man. I, I started at the end, at the very end again. <laughs> I'm not doing that. Uh, so, newsletter, we talked about that. Kickstarters. First one, Pathfinder for Savage Worlds. Uh, there's another Kickstarter happening. We don't know when, though. Uh, there is a, as I don't know when, I don't think it's been announced yet. I haven't seen any information about when that's going to happen. But uh, down below, there is a link if you want to join the uh, notification to be notified when the Kickstarter happens. Um, there's like an email list that you can join down there. Check that out. Uh, it's going to be a new, I believe it was two new books. One, another be uh, bestiary, not bestiary, bestiary. And a book for uh, players and GMs with uh, addition going to include the Gunslinger and Magus class from Pathfinder. Uh, next up, starting Tuesday, April 9th, uh, is going to be the a, the second run of Battle Lords for Savage Worlds or Savage Battle Lords. So Battle Lords of the 23rd Century. Uh, that Kickstarter starts next Tuesday, April 9th. Um, there should be a link down in the description below to join uh, the like the wait list for that Kickstarter to start. And then, uh, oh, well, well, hang on. Sorry, go back just a second. I'll go back. I love Battle Lords. They're a super cool team. Uh, and full disclosure, I worked on the last Uncle Ernie's catalog. Uh, so I did mm -hmm. some design work for them. So uh, check out Battle Lords if you haven't. They've got really cool rules on, like, the guns and everything are crazy. The the armor, the power armor rules are really neat. So that's all I'm going to say. I'm, I'm a little biased. So check hey, out that. No, I mean... I, Here's the nice thing about the, this community is that it's such a small knit community already that it's hard to find someone that's not biased about something because yeah. <laughs> everyone's worked on something else that's in the space. And that, uh, I mean, that's one of the best, my favorite things about Savage Worlds is that there's such a, it's a, it's a, it's a nice, well knit community and people are not, you know, trying to fight each other about things. They're, everyone's working together on different things and, uh, yeah, they're I... awesome products. I've run into like, you know, and I believe the whole, the tide rises all boats kind of a thing. So I'm all about supporting the other Savage Rules creators, especially when I've worked on some of their stuff. So, <laughs> right. Right. All right. So, okay. Last Kickstarter then. This one ends next, not next Wednesday, Wednesday, May 1st. That's Street Wolves Turbo Edition, which is what we're mm -hmm. here to talk about today. So let's just kind of dive uh, in, by the way. Uh, I'm... This is the Savage Goose. If you're just joining us, welcome to the Savage Goose Show. Uh, today we're talking to Paul Vincent of Street Wolves. Uh, we're going to talk about this setting he's created. We're going to talk about him and his history with Savage Worlds and tabletop role-playing games. And we're going to talk about the Kickstarter that's currently happening. Uh, link down below if you want to go take a look at that Kickstarter. Uh, and yeah, so let's just go ahead and dive into things, Paul. Sound good? Sounds great to me. Right. So uh, I, I, I told you this is going to come, so I'm going to start with like... Tell me your journey, your history with uh, tabletop role-playing games and how things led you to Savage Worlds. Uh, don't need to talk about Street Worlds yet. If you want to talk about it, it's for sure, but I, you know, go for it. But I'll try to, see, to how, remain, how things... yeah, I'll try to remain concise to not bore your viewers. But 
mostly I kind of got started late because I was interested in role playing games in the capacity of like Star Wars, but like in the 90s when like I was insane for Star Wars and there was a big Star Wars drought and the only thing left was like the role playing game books essentially. But I never was able to get like a group together or like one that was very consistent. So years later, uh, I'm working at a bookstore and I'm able to play Star Wars again. So that's when I got more into role playing games and I started running. Um, th this is the West Ham Games version. Then later on, I started running the Saga Edition. And then I got into weirdly the Ghostbusters RPG. So oh, okay. I didn't come at this from D and D like at all like i played D, D maybe like way later um okay. so i was coming at it from star wars and uh Go ghostbusters and then you know i started because i've always been a writer to some capacity i started writing stuff but and, and making stuff for my own game so like designing cards and designing extra helper sheets for people and writing all this stuff and writing the campaigns but i never like got into publishing anything uh, it was like a lot of just kind of false starts or just stuff for my own crew um and then eventually i decided well maybe i can make like and i, I got into gi joe and i created like a gi joe uh system or it was based on the west end games cinematic mm -hmm. d6 system and I ran that for a while. And then I thought, well, why don't I just like publish this? You know, I'll just tear off the serial numbers and I'll publish it as something else. And that was the birth of Special Mission Force Wolfpack. Uh, so I was working on that for a while and just kind of petered out. And then mostly because I wasn't really satisfied with the dice pools are fun, but at a certain point they get real clunky. Like as your characters advance, you're rolling like whole fistfuls of dice. So, mm -hmm. and I wanted something that was like a little more modern. So I started looking around uh, and see what other open systems, because I'm not really a mechanics guy. I'll make mechanics if I have to, but I'd rather rely on somebody else's mechanics. And so I eventually found Savage Worlds and Everything I read about it seemed great. It had that, like, it wasn't a D20 system. You know, it had, like, it was very skills-based and focused. Mm -hmm. I like that stuff. Even, like, kind of the wounds were a little bit, like, Star Wars stuff that I was used to. Um, so, and I'm not saying, I know it's probably people picking it apart, but it was, mm -hmm. there's no hit points, right? Like, just it's kind of things right. I, I was interested in. So, I I played, yeah, like... I can't, I can't Sorry, go on. I was gonna say I can't I can't say that I'm I'm super familiar with uh, the Star Wars systems. Like, I know there was the D twenty system, and I know there's like the the current like fancy flight system, and that's about all I know. Okay, so. yeah, I'm way way past that. <laughs> but um, so at a certain point, I was just like, okay, this Savage World seems pretty cool, and then I just got the core book, and then I ran a couple adventures that were just like Old West, not Deadlands, just whatever I could use out of the core book. And I immediately knew it was the right thing for me. And so then I really started diving into it. And because there was already a GI Joe essentially in freedom squadron. And I think there's another game that isn't being supported anymore. Maybe strike force seven or something like that. Um, there's, there's so many, which is the beautiful thing about sad drills. There's yeah. so many, so I can't, I can't keep track of them all. But because people had already covered that ground, I was like, I need to do something else. And then that's kind of what, because at the end of the G.I. Joe run, I kind of turned it into G.I. Joe meets Miami Vice. And my players really liked that. They're like, you know, they really enjoyed the whole vibe and everything and the beaches and whatnot. And so that's kind of what I leaned into. And that's eventually became uh, Street Wolves. No, I don't want to get too much into it, but that's kind okay. of the, the whole history right there. Like, you know, it started with Star Wars and ends with Street Wolves. <laughs> Okay, so that leads me to two two questions. So, so one is just like, so do you know which um, which edition you started with with Savage Worlds? Uh suede. Oh, suede. Okay, nice. Yeah, so, it was only a few years yeah. ago. It was like four or five years ago. So, well, it's awesome that you've you've been that committed then to just like dive into suede and it, it to grab to really for it to like really grab hold of you and uh, encourage that direction. Um, I, I I love suede. I think it's what it's definitely my favorite edition that I've used. 
Uh, I've used a, I think I've used like three different editions at this point. Um, but that's awesome. And then second question is, so if you started with Savage World, or sorry, started with Star Wars, uh, have you, are you a part of the Star Wars Savage Worlds community on Facebook? I'm not as much as I used to because I've been so geared towards other projects. Sure. You know, not just Savage Worlds, but I'm working on other games. But I did release Spirit of the Rebellion, which is an expansion for that Star Wars, you know, that whole thing. Um, and that was just for free, for fun, a fan project. And I'd really like to get back to it and update it because there's characters that are missing from it. There's things in shows that had come out since then, like Ahsoka's come out since then. And right. Andor season two is coming out. So who knows what's in there? But um, it's just kind of one of those things where it's like, I love it. It was so fun to work on because what I used was a lot of assets that were just out there from toys and just various things like the mm -hmm. commercial stuff that had existed it because the the theme of it really is the uh, the graphic design layout is like the 1983 star wars like return of the jedis had come out and gone and it so you know that's my prime star wars basically i kind of grew up around empire and return of the jedi so the spirit of rebellion is essentially a love letter to that era of star wars um but like I said, I've just been so busy with everything else. It's just like, I really don't want to work on the project that I can't charge money for or else Disney would sue me into oblivion. So, right. Yeah. I uh, say so the community around the Star Wars, the, the Savage Star Wars stuff um, is pretty strong. And they, they're, they're fan books, obviously, and you know, not, not being sold, but their fan books are thick. Uh, and they're good. Full of content. Um, I, I really enjoy them and Savage Worlds is my preferred way to play Star Wars. And I'm not just a Savage Worlds guy. I believe that there are systems that specifically address types of games you want to play. But oh, yeah. if I'm going to play Star Wars, I want to play it in Savage Worlds. I tried the 5e version and it's awful. I hated it so much. It just does not feel like Star Wars. I don't really care for the fantasy flight thing because I don't know. I, they use the custom dice and yeah, stuff. I yeah, that, the, the custom dice is definitely something that like kind of stretches me a little bit away. I like some of the ideas there, but I think that yeah, Savage Worlds just does things really well um, in that kind of that kind of like action packed kind of uh, feeling. Yeah, uh, my first my first Savage Worlds game was a sci fi game, so not strictly Star Wars, but it was sci fi. Um, and I, I just I I feel the same way that I feel like uh, Savage Worlds does sci fi or space opera or you want to call star wars really well so it's good um well i just want to say so, if pinnacle gets the license i'm available for that so <laughs> well, then maybe they'll be uh next uh next april 1st they'll announce that or maybe uh great cool um so i do see some questions coming in i'm going to hold off on some of these questions until uh maybe later in the interview so um, I do see the questions though coming in. If you guys have any other questions you want to ask Paul, please leave them down there. And I don't um, see anything, just so everyone's clear. I'm not yeah, ignoring he, you. Not... <laughs> yeah, so you, I'll show them up later. So we'll ask those questions later. Uh, but yeah, feel free to keep those questions coming. Uh, so let's talk about Street Wolves. Um, I, I read through the I, I've read through the the use uh, the whole entire PDF. I've read through the Jumpstart. Um, in fact, and uh, for, uh, you know we're working on I'm uh, for those who. Don't know what she is, it's just everybody at this point, uh, except for Paul, is that I'm working on a video uh, kind of talking about my thoughts on Street Wolves. Um, and I had a lot of fun. I'm still working on the video. I'm hoping to have it out by the end of the week. And I'm really, I really enjoyed making this video and talking about it and just imagining the setting of Street Wolves. Uh, but Paul, I, for the people at home who are, are, are not familiar with Street Wolves, can you give me like a, a brief explanation of what that is, of what the Street Wolves setting is? Uh, yeah, it's retro noir, nineteen eighty synthwave inspired action adventure, which probably doesn't mean okay. anything to anybody. But <laughs> say, what what what's unpack that? What's it's kind of like so rad but moody adventures in the nineteen eighties. Like it's and it's got somewhat futuristic tech, but mm -hmm. which would be like maybe early ninety to mid nineties level tech, but early you know it's futuristic for the mm -hmm. time but there's other things like vr that doesn't really you know it was early in the 90s it, but it, it wasn't really anything that was impressive right it's almost it's like as if 
if VR had existed then, what it would have looked like. Or yeah. it would have. Yeah. Um, so what made you think to... Uh, you, we kind of we got a little bit of that there with your talking about the history of a few RPGs, um, kind of how you move from like one thing into Street Wolves. But can you expand a little bit more on like how Street Wolves came about? I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, just, just how it came about. Well, so while I was working on it and trying to figure out what this new thing was, when I realized I couldn't do GI Joe essentially. Um, I knew I wanted it in the eighties. I knew I wanted it to be very Miami, Miami vice. Uh, but like more than that. So, uh, my friend, Jason Ho, who's an art director was kind of giving me free art direction advice. And he was encouraging me at the time to lean into the synth wave, synth wave aesthetics. Okay. And so then I did, and that really unlocked the, a lot of it where it's like, why does the why do the colors in, in synthwave are why are they so saturated and you know why are the characters acting the way they are why are they wearing sunglasses you know like, why is it all smoky and steamy you know so a lot of those questions i i went about answering when making the setting and so the more i leaned into that the more it fed into the mechanics and the story and all that kind of stuff so that was basically right. the birth of like street wolves as we know it and then taking a cue from the the whole gi joe thing well what if gi joe and you know this is people may have not realized this un unless they've read the, the deep lore stuff but essentially <laughs> what if gi joe existed and was defeated slash dissolved in the early 80s and then their cobra for lack of a better term went underground and sort of won and so that's kind of where we're left off is the the good guy organization doesn't exist anymore so veterans from that organization have kind of recruited new people to try to fight the battle you know and, mm -hmm. and defeat the evil that didn't actually get defeated so yeah and it's not you know uh it's underground it's it, it, sort, of, sort of underground i say like it's a uh, not literally underground but it's a kind of like a unseen rebellion. Yeah, they're illegal like, operatives essentially. They're working outside the law in order to, you know, defeat evil and help the helpless, sort of thing. And that feeds yeah. into the a lot of like the you know '80s tropes too. You know, like A Team, and you know, even though it's not based on A Team or Night Rider or those kinds of things, it does use <laughs> a lot of those familiar beats. You know, of yeah, you know, Night Rider isn't a cop, right? Like he doesn't have any. As far as I remember, he doesn't have any legal jurisdiction to arrest anybody. I, I, I can't. I don't Michael think Knight, so. I should say. Yeah. But uh, someone, in, someone in the uh, comments can let us know if uh, or put that. If if Michael Knight could arrest people and put them in jail, I don't think he could. Yeah. I don't think. Yeah, I don't think so. Either. I think he just stopped them and then. That's all. Or maybe somebody that's... else. But how did how did an episode end? This has been so I, long since mm. I watched the show. I, I, I just I, like I the car. I've only seen like I think I've seen like two episodes in my life of that of Knight Rider. And like three episodes of A Team, just because I'm a little bit younger. So, uh, you're so, forgiven. So, thanks, I appreciate that. <laughs> um, I, I've watched some, which is better than most people. Yeah, think. true. So I think I think I, I think I should get like a little bit there. Uh, so okay, so you and so it's a uh, takes place in the late 1980s. Um, technology a little bit futuristic. Uh, so when I was editing the the video, um, I had a, some definitely some like particular movies that I had in mind. So that, or pieces of cultural reference that I had in mind for uh, what this might uh, feel like. And I know that at the beginning of the book, uh, both the Jumpstart and the actual book, you get some like media references, uh, like how media that, media we could watch to kind of get a feel for what the games could be like. Um, do you want to talk about those? And as well as any, is there any other media references that you think might give like a, people a sense of what uh, Street Wolves is like? Yeah, well, it's been first of all. Let me say it's been a really long day, so my brain is really fried. So I might not have as good. <laughs> I say you, you, it's, <laughs> been a, it's, it's been it's been a uh, a big day. I mean, yeah. It, to be clear, guys, the Kickstarter did launch today, yeah. so Paul has been grinding uh, to make sure that everyone On knows about media, it. And... Yeah. Um. But so the one I always quote is Miami Vice because just the whole vibes of the detectives fighting this crime that will never end and it's crushing them kind of stuff because if you say miami vice people might laugh and oh this 
the funny clothing and all this stuff. But if you actually watch the show, it gets pretty serious. And there's a lot of serious things that happen in between the funny things. So, you know, that's a big influence. And then um, there's a movie that nobody has really watched but me called Alphabet City, where it's this guy in New York who runs a drug operation and he's the mobster that he works for wants to rub him out. And he's just basically going from location to location. It's a little bit boring, but he's got a cool car. And that movie's like all aesthetics. If if you like pause the screen multiple times, you could probably just get like what Street Wolves art would be if it was like a movie or something. Um, so there's that. Uh, there's the movie drive just because I, I like the. It's such a cool movie. I don't know if you've seen it or. Okay, I just like, had to look it up. I was like, I was like, what? I was like, 1984 thriller. Drama. Well, Alphabet City, yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, sorry, wait, sorry. Which the movie Drive uh, with? Oh, Drive. Ryan um, Gosling is that? His yeah, name? it's Ryan Gosling. Yeah, yeah, it's Gosling. Um, yeah. But just uh, how he's a super cool driver that you know gets into scrapes and he's got to fight his way out. Um, I love that movie. Uh, and then just like synthwave mute just listening to synthwave music looking at synthwave art i just kind of molding all this stuff like everything that's in my brain from watching tv when i was a kid even like you know even though it's not cyberpunk some of the blade runner aesthetics yeah you know? yeah absolutely okay yeah i i when reading through it it almost felt to me like a like a proto a proto cyberpunk that's like it's not yeah. cyberpunk it's it felt it, the technology is not quite there. Uh, the um, you know the, there's this like certain aesthetic that's not like full blown cyberpunk like levels of aesthetic, um, and there's uh, uh, to, to quote my own video that's going to come out later this week. Um, there's almost like this element where the seeds of corruption are are there, like a societal corruption are there, but it's not as bad as it is in cyberpunk and like like your typical cyberpunk setting. So it felt to me very much so like a, a proto like before cyberpunk really happens kind of setting. So you pretty much n nailed synth waves, synth wave and outrun aesthetics is it's shiny, clean technology's new. We're hopeful for the future, but under the surface is the rot. And that's right. why it concentrates a lot on the shadows and the darkness and the, you know, like the night calls and stuff, because like all that, st the danger is there, but people aren't really seeing it yet uh, because everything's so cool and fresh and, and new. Hip, yeah. 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 No. Okay. So I'm glad I, I was kind of on some, some, some level of track with that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it felt, I don't know. The, 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 Cyberpunk has always been a, a, a genre of game to me that I've always been a little nervous about uh, just because it's like, technology advances and there's a certain element of um rot as you would societal rot that i'm, I'm not very sure if i'm maybe quite comfortable with um in like dming or being a part of in the in a game but like this for me is like oh this is like a good level of like hope and um possibility of actually things like kind of like regaining regaining control and stuff so uh that that is really kind of like i don't know something about the, this setting that's really speaking to me um one of the media some of the media options i came to my mind when it came to like the the neon or like kind of look of a few things um i was thinking about like the early part of the movie akira i'm not sure if you're mm -hmm. familiar oh with the light trails uh, and stuff yeah. yeah the light trails yeah 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 that's cool. some and, and like yeah. just the cool like slick motorbikes um not like the later stuff but mostly just like the early like metal hard edges light trails and then um when i first was reading through the book the other thing that came to me was on more than you've been mentioning a lot of like the action stuff I, on the technology side um, came to me. It was uh, the movie Hackers. OK, you know yeah, I've only it's, seen uh, that all the way through once. It's a great movie. I need to watch it again. But yeah, it there is some hackers in that, especially like the hacking montage. Like I have tables for montages and right, that yeah, is yeah. a lot of hackers is just. Like where they're standing around them. looking cool while somebody's hacking, you know, or whatever. And like, yeah, yeah, looking, and then seeing like the the three D like mainframe, yeah, pictures, the, like the things on the person's glass, the the screen on the yeah. glasses going up, yeah, yep, yeah, yeah. So I, I imagine a lot of that, and just like the, like that punk 
feel as well of like the the uh punk nature of those kids just you know and underground layers and stuff so that's awesome all right so yeah so that, that kind of talks about street wolves is anything else you mentioned about the setting um it's awesome no i don't i don't no, know is, I, no. I, I i'll say that one of the thing the you have a few uh uh what new setting rules for like new systems in in the book um and uh the one i i really liked was your drive system because i felt like it gave consequences for things that the heroes have to do essentially or, or might likely are going to happen um that aren't very heroic so i want to say i do I, there's a system in general the audience here there's a there's really cool systems additioned into this game that um are really fun and interesting i'm not going to detail too much uh because you, you'll get the book and read them because they're cool <laughs> it's it is a lot like it it's essentially kind of a, a stress system or uh I'll, I'll just say that the core of it came from, I believe, the old horror campaign, because I, I don't even know if they've updated. I haven't gotten the new one yet. But of the sanity rules where it's like it's they're not going crazy or anything like that, mm -hmm. but it's just taking a toll on them mentally toll. as yeah. they do the job. So, yeah, absolutely. No, I thought that was uh, that was a, a really nice way to like balance that out and kind of like give some level of consequences to, to characters that aren't like. Almost like too scary in a sense like going crazy and like losing control of your character and stuff like that so and then that was a nice it was a nice like balance um but it's still like a way to like add in that that element and kind of fit it into that punk setting or that punk feel um with, with what you're doing here so uh that is the that's the setting street wolves um now you're doing and you released that how how long ago now? about a year ago yeah, yeah. So about so it took about that. two years to make just because I didn't know what I was doing. And it, you know, it was like a, a lot of pages, a lot of art. I had to like learn a lot about graphic design. Like I did a lot of graphic design, but not in that capacity with print. So, but anyway, so two years, then it came out last year. And then um, I've learned since then. And that's one of the reasons why I'm doing Like I wanted to do it in print, but I felt like first I needed to establish that I knew what I was doing and that people could trust me with something. So I, if I went straight to Kickstarter, I said, Hey, I've never published anything before, but I have this great idea. <laughs> Please give me money now. I don't think it would have been as successful, but you, so, wanted, you wanted to get some street cred out there. Right. And street cred for a street wolf. Um, but then I, and then it also gave me the opportunity to adjust and fix things. So, you know, there's been some updates to the book, which, I could do that over the last year, you know, year or so where, you know, I'll make corrections to type typos and stuff. And it, I didn't have to worry about it, you know, being in print. There's, I, I, there's always going to be some mistakes in any printed material. I, I hate to break it to people uh, just because there's so much, but I want to catch as much as possible. And one, oh, yeah. that, that really helped me a lot. So. Good. Yeah. Uh, I say like, I mean, I'm, I have a, a first edition copy of Savage Worlds Adventure Edition. I have a first edition copy of Pathfinder for Savage Worlds. They have mistakes on them. It happens. Yeah. And even so, if like everyone, you know, uh, Pinnacle put out a PDF and then asked for feedback, you know, people give feedback, but mm -hmm. you won't find everything in it. And then like, you know, I've had it where I've had people look at it. I've had my proofreaders look at it and then I open it up and then I find a typo and I'm like, oh my God, but you got to let it go. It's, it's just going to happen. Yeah. So uh, with that, then we, as you kind of uh, mentioned is that we are, there is a Kickstarter out for Street Wolves. Um, I'm going to share my screen here. Uh, I thought it was a little, let's see if I can get this a little bit bigger. There we go. Uh, so you have, I, I know right here, it says here funded in one hour. Yeah, that was very surprising. So the original goal was, was the 3000. And that was just to get us the printed book and then I would do the updated layout and then that would be it. Um, and I was very surprised. I was hoping that we'd get to the 3000 by like the end of today or tomorrow or something like that. But it was just like insanity. As soon as I launched, it was just like, doo -doo 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 -doo. and then like, in a, it, I think it was like in minute 57, it funded. Uh, so right. that was very surprising and mind blowing. And I think so everyone... I, was, I was a little bit, I was a little bit late to the game. I, I think I was like an hour and a half in. And I was like, oh, 
Oh, too Mr. bad. Mr. Gideon. I know. <laughs> I think it was, I think it's somewhere around here. It tells you like what your backer number is. And I don't know. Yeah. What mine is right now, but yeah. So, I mean, um, so, so yeah, let's talk about what, like, what's, what is turbo edition uh, to kind of explain everything to everybody else. So you have street wolves. You've, you've been published that on drive through RPG. So what, what is in, what's special about turbo edition? Okay. Updated layout print. Those are the two main goals, but then uh, I wanted to fund more art. So that was a stretch goal that was met already. So we have like oh, another like $1,500 for art. Um, and then I want guest adventures. So we've got those two are funded right now. We're working on another custom art up our uh, custom art upgrade. I think this one uh, might go more towards more gear and stuff like that. Um, yeah. And then once that's funded, uh, we can push for the plot point campaign uh, done by a buddy of mine, Vince, uh, who he's got a great idea for a globe spanning campaign called Dead Hand. Uh, and so that will help well, fund this, that. This, this is this is my personal like minimum That's one you want. Goal. I, yeah, I, I I hesitate to kind of tell the world this, but um, I pretty much only run pre-written campaigns okay. uh, for every setting. Um, and and I and one of the things I love is the way we do the, the plot point campaign system. So I'm like, okay, cool. If I, I want, I want us to get, I want you to get at least here, so I can we can get that plot point campaign, <laughs> and well, uh, I don't have to worry about writing something myself. I don't want to worry you too much. I mean, if it doesn't go with this, I will find a way to make it happen. Uh, maybe not as many bells and whistles and art and stuff, but there will be a plot point campaign. I am collecting other adventures to create like campaigns and stuff that might not be plot point, but I do want. I have a lot of street wolves adventures ready to go eventually so plenty of that stuff but still pledge all the money you can to get this plot point campaign done <laughs> um i so then you also have these uh these backer stretch goals yeah i was just doing that for fun i think because you know i didn't want to like put a number behind a vehicle and pet character sheet but i was like well, if we hit 150 that'd be cool you know it's just a nice reward and then, honestly, I'm just going to be honest, I don't want to deal with ordering hundreds of bennies, uh, custom bennies. But, hey, if uh -oh. we hit 200 backers, I'll do it. So Yeah, guys, yeah, guys if you guys want Shields Benny, you got to get some more backers. If you, uh, yeah. he doesn't want, let's, let's make him do it. If you, don't, uh, if you so... want to punish me, if you hate me, <laughs> that's the best way to do it. <laughs> cool. All right. Uh, and so the also, also some like, really cool add-ons, um, uh, these... I, I love these metallic stickers because I remember in I'm like first grade, like these these like holographic stickers were well, this, oh yeah, there you go. The this one's the only one. Oh, oh this one's the only Sorry. holographic one. The other two are just normal, but they're they're high quality okay. normal. So well they look pretty pretty cool. Uh awesome. So I'm sure is it Oh, then there's uh, this one here I want to share too because I think oh this we lost is... the screen oh there we go I lost my back yeah now this this right here I thought was really cool yeah um uh just as like you have like the cassette the like cassette like a uh, holder and it's just it's a USB drive yeah I got a whole bunch made behind me if people can see that pile <laughs> I've been making them in anticipation of the Kickstarter so they're on top of the plastic box. I say because you're putting these stickers on yourself, right? Yeah. So the stickers, uh, I got these um, sheets from a company, and then I'm printing them on labels, and they're turning out really good. And then I just put them on myself, uh, and they I cut out a little piece of it to make it look like the middle is real. Yeah. Um, but the J I, card it, it fooled me. It fooled me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and the J card I got had printed from a company called Fireball Printing. So these are professionally printed. I designed them but i had a printer print them and then i just ordered a bunch of cassettes and i had to cut out a little piece of each one so the cassette fits in perfectly but um yeah it looks really really cool when it's all together so no it looks really good. looks really really cool now there's some other things here that i i'm like oh you know um i know you said that you get this jump start in uh in print uh, yeah i share with friends um 
So, and then uh, the foundry modules. Which are, yeah, that no. was done earlier uh, last month, but I just threw it on there as an add on if you want to get it. Uh, it's what I use. So, you know, I'm going to update it and keep using it because I, this is pretty much the only way I run uh, Street Wolves now is through that. The foundry. Yeah, I have found that people, a lot of people have been moving to foundry lately as their, their main virtual tabletop. Um, I haven't had to. Uh, just because I my games are luckily, thankfully, in person. I'm jealous. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I do think that you, I technically use a virtual tabletop on my actual tabletop. Um, I use uh, Ark and Forge for. Mm. Oh yeah, they're my, cool. Yeah, to make like, to make so basically, I have my I have a TV that's like on top of my uh, coffee table that I project from my laptop. The my basically just a picture of a map just to make sure that I have a map that looks cool. So a couple of the maps uh, that are in the foundry module and will be in later stuff are Ark and Forge maps. Oh, perfect. So good. Good. Now I'll have my Ark and Forge maps. That'll be fine. <laughs> so, okay. And then, uh, yeah, pop-up campaign when it gets unlocked. Um, so I know you want to talk about this. So I'm going to ask you the question. Um, what about for people who have already purchased your PDF on drive RPG? So, um, yeah, we're going to work out a way to do this. Hopefully, I can do it all through BackerKit. If I can't, you might have to email me with proof of purchase. Um, but basically, if you back at the PDF tier and above and you provide a proof of purchase later, you'll get the, you'll get like a super special thank you. Um, you'll also get a free adventure that will be included in some future iteration product or something. Uh, but totally free for you, and you'd be the first one to get it. And then the third thing is those NPC cards that you'd get them for free, and you could print them like just at cost. So otherwise, if you buy them as an add-on and you want to have them printed, you have to pay like six bucks or something like that. But it, it's just like I'm including it as free as I can get it for you to print them uh, low cost. Yeah. So. And I know this is on the FAQ, but I'm going to ask you again here. Uh, what about my PDF that I already bought on DriveThruRPG? So What's that gets... That? So you can literally not take part in this Kickstarter and just sit on your butt and then wait like a month or two. And then when I update it, it'll be updated. The, so that is going to be updated for everybody. Uh, but I would appreciate it if you believe in... Table cat games, you know, just buy a dice bag <laughs> or or something if you don't, you know, want to buy it again. You know what I mean? It's I understand, you know, I don't want you to double dip if you're a PDF customer. Uh it'd be really cool if you did, but you don't have yeah, to. No, I, um, I, I I backed I bet the PD the physical one because I like I like yeah, my but, physical books. Yeah. But it like that. the you know, if if you get the physical copy then you know that's going to come with the pdf but if you're only a pdf person and you don't want to buy it again you don't have to just go on the add-on tier or just give me a dollar i mean I, I know it sounds like i'm begging right now but i'm just saying it helps the future of table cat games and street wolves in general the more successful this is so yeah, but so let's... no pressure on you don't buy nothing and then just let it you know you'll get the update but oh i'm sorry I, i'm sorry i don't mean to interrupt no, no, but also, if you do back at the PDF tier, you get all that extra stuff for free. So, like, you'd get the plot point campaign and and all those other unlocks for free. Is if you all the stretch goals? Yeah, all the stretch goals. Yeah. If you didn't buy it, if you just waited for an update, you wouldn't get any of that stuff. So, okay, yeah. I feel dirty. Ugh, this gross. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta be, you gotta be a salesman for a moment. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, uh, everyone. I apologize. Sorry, sorry to all the salesmen out there, guys. Yeah. I just, I can't. I can't do what you They're do. They're made of stronger yeah. stuff. Yeah. Uh, so, so you talked. We talked about uh, fuel. Got the Kickstarter. What about? And this is where I didn't prep you. What <laughs> is your imagination for uh, the future of Street Wolves? I mean, you kind of hinted at things already, but what? It, what do you want to see happen with Street Wolves in the future? Okay. So a lot of adventures planned. One of the next adventures that I was hoping to get out last year that didn't come out was Heart of Glass which is a collaboration with Megan Caves of Gone Rogue Entertainment. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, she was, uh, for those who don't know, you probably know her 
as Adelaide from East Texas University at one well, wild cards. Yeah, wild well, cards. Big throw. Um, she was gonna do like audio for it. So essentially, what it is 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 it's a it's darker than the normal Street Wolves. It, it's a fish out of water story where the Street Wolves go to a small town, a uh, a small town full of secrets, and they find clues which are like audio based or like like somebody's diary essentially i don't want to spoil too much but that would be megan caves doing that and awesome. i write it and uh i've tested it twice it's awesome the players loved it they went nuts but this whole thing just kind of took over the whole street wolves kickstarter so once that's out of the way and then i work on a few other things i'm going to go back to that release that at some point, I would like to do an expansion, which is tentatively called Street Wolves Malibu, which moves the timeline to 1991, and it takes place in California, uh, LA, Malibu area. And mm -hmm. it's a little bit more fun in the sun, surf kind of vibes, Pacific Blue, if anybody knows that show about uh, bicycle cops on the boardwalk uh, from the 90s. But uh that that's kind of like the idea and we'll see where the evil organizations you know have got like you know if they've risen in power if they've fallen in power if there's been new factions uh i have a few new rules that i'd like to add as a part of that so there's like this relationship thing where it's kind of a love thing which i don't want if people don't not everyone's gonna love that because they're not into like mm -hmm flirting and that Romantic. kind of stuff at the table yeah. and you have to be very mature yeah, to handle that um yeah that's that's one of the things that we uh kind of like just kind of get rid of in our yeah games. but other uh, play yeah some of my players are just they have a good time with it but and then also there's a thing where uh that you you can cut to a scene quickly without a bunch of prep but I, i'm not going to get too much in that now but there's all these ideas that i've been filing away for malibu so great so you if I, the point is that you have more things more ideas for Street Wolves, and we can expect more content for Street Wolves in the future. Yeah, it is awesome, especially since uh, clearly I mean, people are people are wanting it. Uh, we're getting, getting a nice strong start with your Kickstarter, so and we still have a uh, twenty eight more days to go. So <laughs> that's awesome. All right, so uh, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and start going through some comments and uh, asking some questions. So let me see if I let me uh, go through. I kinda, I saw a few on the way here on the way in. I want to make sure that I don't miss anything. Uh, Make sure I. Uh, Pierce Loom kind of said something that I thought I agree with him. At least it's not a question, but I'm going to reiterate it. It's very healthy to have creators that aren't DD players in recovery. It allows them to have a perspective that isn't led by either being or not being uh, like the 1000 pound gorilla. Yeah. And it's, so. yeah, so many people start with DD and like, you know, they have to break away from it or whatever. And, and, yeah, I, and while I've played it, I ran it for a little while. Uh, the running of it kind of solidified the idea that it wasn't really for me. I, I enjoy playing it as a player, but running it was just such a slog. I, I don't know. I, I apologize to DMs who love d and I just could not handle it. It just felt like I was organizing these like three-hour battles where the, the PCs were just going to beat up on my characters for like... Yeah. Like it was just that like is, a punching bag. I just didn't feel like a good give and take or i don't know i like to tell a story with people not just be like a punching bag yeah i i always think, often think about that maybe that's a maybe that's a good topic for me to kind of talk about some other live stream um the the feeling of a system i, I can't even really sometimes i can't even really fully pinpoint what makes savage worlds feel more like a narr more narrative system compared to D, D. yeah um the the main thing i can point out is that when you look at all the features and stuff that characters get in D, &D it's, they're almost always combat based um i think that kind of throws it lends itself to part of that but nevertheless yeah i i there's something about satchel that just makes things like nice and fun to, to play in um so this is uh from mystics um and kind of i'm actually asking the same question why did you choose savage worlds and not make a 5e compatible product because uh, I don't like money. No, that's a joke. I don't know if you see 5e stuff, it just like goes bonkers. But um, yeah, it just didn't feel right. I, it, mm. Street Wolves is 5e. I'm not saying I would never commission somebody else to do it, but 
personally, it would just be so wrong feeling because I can't imagine the same feeling I get when running. And like I tell the players, you're going to this party and the bad guy's there and you meet this person and this happens and then a boat race and you jump on the boat. It, it might be possible in D and D if you're like real hand wavy or uh, like, yeah, like you ignore the rules or use a bunch of house rules, but as it's written, I just can't imagine having that same experience. Uh, so Peter uh, Saloom, uh, who hopefully will be on, on this show someday, someday soon, asks, uh, is is the vapor a metaphor for drug use? Um, I, I feel like I, can, I could answer the question, but I, I will allow you to. Uh, I don't think we, we fully talked about the vapor, which is definitely no. a big element of Street Wolves um, that we I think we probably accidentally didn't talk about. Yeah. Well, I'll say that it is if you want it to be at your table. Um, not, it, I didn't really intend it to be. I just wanted a way to explain why the, the cities looked pink and purple and junk yeah. at night. So, we, uh, since I don't think we did explain the vapor, do you want to explain what the vapor is? It's essentially, know. yeah, it's just, uh, I'll do the quick version. It's just, at some point, a bunch of cities experience these explosions and it's not fully explained, but it gives you enough to it hooks as a DM to get it or GM mm -hmm. to get into it. But that caused this weird phenomena in each of these cities where there's like weird glowing colors and light trails and, and that sort of thing. And um, some people get affected by it negatively where there's like a minor version where they just like, they have to wear sunglasses all the time. So they look super cool. Like people in eighties music videos. Um, and, but some people get special powers from it and they're more kind of like vampires where they have the light skin and sun damages them and that sort of thing. Um, but it, it's more of a way to include the synthwave aesthetics mechanically and also give people the ability to play the game with characters with power because without that, then it was just more like modern combat and stuff and Uzis and whatnot. And some people don't want that. Some people want to shoot laser beams out of their hands. And so that was a way to facilitate that. And I don't like personally, when I run it, I don't say no to a character that wants that. But most of my players don't pick that. So it's yeah. it's up to them. So but if you yeah. want it and, you know, like one way to use vapor is as like these weird scientists find a way to make a drug out of it, you know, or there's lots of things you can do to introduce weird yeah. science in, yeah. that, in that respect. So. Yeah. For me, for me, the, besides the, 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 the arcane background, the, the, this reading, again, just me reading your work, um, the vapor to me just felt more like it's a very strong aesthetic thing. And also like a way to like make the, the nights more, alone in a sense because people are, are afraid of it so i think that was it was just like a fun aesthetic and story reason for having less people in the streets and that kind of thing uh Salum also says um i hope that the street wolves t-shirt comes in sleeveless too <laughs> so uh, uh yeah i had a store with it doesn't shirts. yeah yeah that, i it's probably because i used uh printified to fulfill all the orders it's turned off now uh someday i'll, I'll figure out how to get that store working again but you know, if there's a sleeveless option, I'll I'll turn it on for you. There you go. <laughs> uh, and Pierce, Pierce, so Pierce is great. Um, I'm talking to him a lot lately. Uh, are you managing this Kickstarter yourself, or uh, you have someone helping you, or is this are you a man show? Or it's mostly me, my partner uh, Aria. Shout out to Aria for putting up with me. Will help me if I ask, but you know, and then I have friends supporting me and that sort of thing. But it's it's mostly just me. So. Uh, let's see here. Again, yeah, it's going through all these questions here. Um, a lot of Peter Saloon stuff. Uh, Peter also says that your Midwest, your Midwest accent slipped. So I don't, I don't remember. I don't know when, but apparently it slipped. I have one all the time. I went out to California and lived there for a while. And it was like, everyone would just make fun of me. So it's new. I haven't <laughs> heard it. Uh, it's bad. So. If, yeah. If you key on it, you'll, you'll hear it. I, I may, I'm also thinking I may just not be very good at knowing what a Midwest accent sounds like, but I've learned long ago to not care. 
I'm not uh, going to be a movie star, so it doesn't matter. Uh, Amstrad Doom says, uh, Street Rolls 90210. That's more possible, Street Rolls Malibu. So Exactly. exactly. If that's what you want, just <laughs> help fund this, and then later on. <laughs> uh, Sorry, I'm just trying to think. Um, Okay, uh, this is a good question. Um, I'm gonna, I am gonna have a pull up here. Um, Mystic says um, he's not sold in the setting, which is fine. That, that I don't think you know synthwave isn't gonna be for everybody, but he is interested in like what kind of things are in it that could provide um, outlets for other creators. You know, like, one of the things that I think is really nice about Savage Worlds is that even if we aren't using a book, there's things in the book that. Can be helpful in other our other games, either homebrew games or the games we're running. Um, I think so. What what kind of things do you feel like are the? For, I, I mean, I'll speak from as someone who's read the book. I think the drive system is great uh, for kind of incorporating other games. Um, I think I prefer that almost to like any sanity system, uh, especially like in especially where for like other games like that. There's a lot of cool edges. Yeah, uh, I, I, mean, I don't, I don't want to. No, I'm not going to try to sell you on it if you don't like it. Uh, and I'm not going to lie that it's all original. Like, because like I said, I'm more a story guy than crunch guy mm -hmm. anyway. But, you know, drive could be useful if you want more gritty people dealing with consequences of their actions. Like when you're shooting people and they die, you have to make a drive check. Like you're not just going you know, gun crazy, killing everyone you see, like there's certain things, like if you fail uh, saving somebody, you know, you have to make a drive check. If you do drugs, you have to make a drive check. So, I mean, drive, I'm proud of, I like it. Uh, there's relationships, which they help ground your character. Um, they are very similar to, and like I said, there's not a lot of originality here. It's just kind of pulled and twisted and tweaked to, to be perfect for my setting. But mm -hmm. uh, relationships is a lot like bonds from Delta Green, but not as depressing um, if you play Delta Green. Um, but it helps like you can bring in relationship like a character's brother or, you know, a player's brother or, or rival or something into the adventure. Uh, it explains what they're doing in their downtime. Oh, I got to deal with my sister or, or whatever. I got to take care of my mother. Um, so you might want to check that out. There, there's advice for running monta montages if you've ever wanted to do a shopping montage and just not have like players sitting there, you know, like totaling up their items for hours. Um, but there's all kinds of different montages with tables to be like give you ideas for all the actions. Uh, there's chase tables with tons of complications for, you know, stuff like, I don't know, a parade crossing your path or or whatever there's like uh, i think a hundred complications for a road and 20 for boat and 20 for foot chases um i don't know i'm trying to think of what but yeah the, there's a no. lot of edges in there that, like a lot of um there's a lot of martial arts edges but there's also like uh like the uh one of my favorites is the the into the groove where if you're listening to music it gives you a, bo a bonus while you're drawing cards and stuff uh, for initiative. Um, so yeah, there, it's a lot of thematic stuff that might apply to modern settings. So if, mm -hmm. you know, if, if you're playing a modern setting, even though it's eighties and not 2020s, it's, you still might find it handy. So. No, I think that's true for a lot of us. So that's should be helpful. I say, I think it's a great pickup. Um, I, I'm, per, I, I'm super, inch, super pumped for the synth wave aesthetic. And like, again, like for me, it's like, I was gonna, it's like, Neo, uh, not Neo, like a uh, proto Neo, yeah, proto, like proto star punk thing going that I, I really enjoy and looking forward to, to running. So, uh, yeah, looking forward to that. Um, uh, the last question I'm gonna I'm gonna take uh, is also from uh, Mystics. Um, this is not about uh, about Street Wolves, but about Star Wars, uh, since we talked a lot about Star Wars early on. And that's just what uh, he just asked. What do you think? What books would you get for? Um, a Star Wars campaign. And I just want to kind of do a quick shout out there on that. And that is um, 
get the uh, there's a, there's a Star Wars companion. Wonderful, yeah. The star there's a wonderful fan made product called the Star Wars companion, something like that. Um, go to the Star Wars Savage World Star Wars Facebook group, uh, and there's a whole bunch of people who will be happy to help uh, tell you about all the stuff. Uh, but mainly, and it's a free book. It's a free PDF. It's just the core rule book for Savage Worlds. Go over there and get a bunch of free PDFs because uh, because it's a licensed thing. They can't sell it because that'd be illegal. So nobody but, will ever charge you money for it. We're all adamant in that. We don't ask for money. It's just a fan, fun fan thing. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So everyone, please uh, go check out the, the Street Wolves Turbo Edition Kickstarter. Um, Paul, do you have anything else you want you want to say about this that I did uh, not think to ask you about? No, I think you've covered everything pretty good. Perfect. Perfect. Um, well. Like I said, look forward to I'll have a video out kind of talking about my thoughts on the setting uh, coming out later this week. Um, and so look forward to that. Uh, go check out the, chicks, the Kickstarter. If you're interested in like, if you always want to read up on the setting and you don't want to like back this yet, go check out the Jumpstart rules um, on Drive Through RPG. Yeah, free, free Jumpstart rules. Go check them out. Uh, I think that is pay whatever you want, I, th I think. Yeah, I only did that to get it. Uh count is one of the products uh, it's a whole thing but just put yeah, zero perfect. i don't Perfect. care just get it for yeah. free uh but go, go check that out um that's it's got a it's got information about the setting it's got some edges uh art type characters and like a small adventure if i remember correctly right yeah 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 so all, all the stuff you expect in a jump start so you go check that out um i'll I, uh if i wasn't gonna if i wasn't getting the, the physical book i would be printing the jump start out to put in my binder of jump starts mm. so like a stack like a binder just like full of jump starts so go take a look at that um, and uh, we'll be back next week uh, with more content. Uh, I, I am still confirming we might have a guest next week. So uh, look forward and stay tuned to see what kind of stuff we talk about then. Uh, now to you all uh, next week. Cheers, everyone.